You are listening to or watching the film cast. I'm David Chen here with Devinder Hardwar and Jeff Kanata. And we are about to dive into David O. Russell's newest film, Amsterdam. I'm going to quote from the plot summary on IMDb, quote, In the 1930s, three friends witness a murder, are framed for it, and uncover one of the most outrageous plots in American history, end quote. Before we begin this review, I do think it's worth acknowledging that uh, the writer-director of this movie is, by all accounts, not a very nice person and has yeah, done a huge piece that, of shit. Yeah. That has done things that uh, many people would deem unforgivable and uh, not worthy of any support whatsoever. Um, I, I am not disputing any of that at all. Uh, I do think that it is interesting to me how, despite those things, which are well known in Hollywood, uh, people continue to work with him. So, literally, some of the biggest stars alive today continue to work with him. And I was talking with my colleague Scott Mendelson about this, and one of the reasons is because there's very few people making movies like him, uh, you know, ma- like like Amsterdam, which are not based off of um, comic books or existing IP. They are targeted adults, and which uh, can often garner awards for many of the por- performances involved. Uh, and it's certainly something that you know director David O. Russell's movies have done in the past. Uh, but that said, I, I totally understand if. People don't want to support a movie like this because they don't want to support David O. Russell. Um, my personal view on it is that uh, movies are the result of the work of hundreds of people. And uh, and so I still think the movie like this one is worth considering despite that. But here's, a, here's an open question. Is given all that stuff I just said, is the movie actually good? Because if it's not good, then it's like, what are we even doing here? Devinder Hardwar, what do you think of Amsterdam? Uh, hard war, what are we even doing here? What are we what even are doing we here? here? <laughs> you know, a question I ask myself in the theater is, what am I doing here? <laughs> what is David O. Russell doing here? Um, I found this movie to be like a perfectly fine romp at times, but uh, it, it, it veers into weird territory. And I think by the end, it just like tries to tie everything up in a like very sentimental way. Uh, sort of like love solves everything. Is really what's important is you know the friends we made along the way, everybody. Uh, while unearthing you know uh, dictatorial uh, conspiracies in America, um, it, this movie feels really uneven. I like I, I like a lot of the people. I think the the chemistry between you know Christian Bale, Margot Robbie, and John David Washington is fantastic. I just feel like this movie is all over the place. It is quirky like so many of david o russell's movies but it doesn't feel like very well uh well i don't know well targeted or well directed um it it feels like he has a lot of ideas and nothing ever really quite uh, quite gels you know the whole idea of calling it amsterdam is because they had this wonderful time these characters living together in amsterdam that a lot of that stuff just felt like student film like uh, B-roll type stuff. It, mm-hmm. A lot of it felt like embarrassing what this movie is trying to do and trying really to force us to really, you know, understand this relationship because these people uh, liked to, to, you know, experience art together and make art together in Amsterdam. Um, I, I just find it really, really uneven. Um, it wasn't boring, you know, like you have enough of these people in here where um, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff going on. I, I think like the the actual like intrigue of the plot is enough to like keep me interested, but I just feel like this is clearly lesser David O. Russell. And uh, yeah, I I, I can almost see like a better movie here. It just feels like he kind of gave up at the end. It's like a, you know, high schooler writing a report and you get to the final page and you're like, I I don't know, yada, yada, yada. In conclusion, uh, let's go home. You know, it feels like, it feels kind of a letdown in that respect. I do think it's no coincidence that a movie whose message is about love and kindness uh, doesn't really resonate or ring true from someone uh, whose most notorious viral clip online is of him screaming at someone. You know, uh, I'm, I, I, I'm referring to uh, his I Heart Huckabee, you know, footage of him from I Heart Huckabees that went viral many years ago of, of him mistreating a cast member on Lily Tomlin, I believe, on that movie, right? In the um, stories with him in Three Kings, you know, George Clooney and everything, like, that that has been the thing. Uh, it is funny though. Like I, I genuinely like Silver Linings Playbook. You know, I think that's a really sweet and romantic movie. Um, but again, coming from this guy, kind of kind of hard to accept sometimes. Right. That's it's like it, it wouldn't. It would make sense that it's like eh, it doesn't quite ring true if like this is the if this is the messenger. You know, uh, that's mm-hmm. behind it. But Jeff Kanata, I am curious. What did you think of Amsterdam? Well, Dave, 
I guess you could say what I think of Amsterdam is best summed up in the form of a limerick. A great cast gives you a head start when crafting a grand piece of art, but sometimes there are factors that make all these actors less than the sum of their parts. I basically agree with Devendra. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm, I may have enjoyed it slightly more than it sounds like he did. I, I, I found the actual process of watching this movie to be pretty fun. Sure. It, it is, yeah, yeah. It is a, it is a wild thing to have so much being thrown at you at any given time. Like literally, oh my gosh, that person's the other Well, is that Timothy Oliphant with two lines in this movie? What's he doing? <laughs> oh, 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 that's a weird quirk. Well, that's, I, I'm trying to process that. It, it is, there was a period after Quentin Tarantino broke out with Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction where every movie, like all the characters had just weird, quirky affectations, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. that was a shortcut to interesting for most people, or that's what they took away from Tarantino's writing is like, hey, it's a weird quirks. And it feels like every character in this movie has weird quirks and uh, strange things you've n literally never seen. I've never seen a character quite like that before. And it's just full of them. And weird plot maneuvers and state. It's just this... I don't want to say it's a train wreck because it's not a train wreck, but it's akin to watching something unfold before you that's just unraveling at the seams almost, or or kind of uh, <laughs> fall. If, you know, it's it's like watching a, a somebody bake a cake, but the cake is, is overflowing on the side, or you know, this this things. It's just too much. It just it can't hold together quite, but it's still fascinating to witness all of the strange pieces like i like i said in the in the limerick this movie some movies are more than the sum of their parts this movie is almost exactly the sum of its parts <laughs> there's just all the parts are the there's so many parts and all of them are there and all of them are in individually interesting but i totally agree with devendra that by the end it's like this is what we were leading up to like the big third act climax is this? That, that's, mm -hmm. it just seems so, I totally agree with uh, Devendra's assessment where it just felt like at the end, it was like, well, and also it all, the yada, 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 we're done. And, um, but, so I don't think it works necessarily. I don't think it's a success per se, but I certainly am glad I watched it and it, it had enough moments of of real strangeness or interesting or or introspection and in, in like how a person works and what that must have been like at that time in that place that I got something out of the experience and seeing all these incredible actors come on for a line or or you know or, or you know the centerpiece characters really create some interesting performances there's enough in Amsterdam that I'm glad I watched it, but it's not a movie I'm 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 gonna go out and say, hey, you, you gotta make time for this one. I basically agree with both of you. Wow, this is one time where we're like all pretty much in agreement on this one. Um to me, it felt like just really unfocused. It's a, a story of political intrigue with no intrigue. You know, you're <laughs> yeah. not like, oh, what's happening? You know, the there's the pacing is just it, it feels like there is none. It feels like we're just like Hey, let's. This is cool. You know, you're you're like walking into like an antique store. You're like, hey, this is kind of cool. Let's like look at this for a second. Yeah. What about that over there? Oh, hey, let's wander. Let's wander over here. Oh, this is kind of cool. You know, like there's nothing. There's no like narrative momentum driving you to the inevitable conclusion that we're we're heading towards. Um. The it's theoretically a whodunit, but like there's no tension or stakes attached to that at all. It seems like it seems like we just completely forget about the whodunit story. I mean, I know it's part of the plot, but I'm not feeling when I'm watching a movie, like, Oh, I, I really care about who it is. That's actually behind the crime necessarily. Right. right? And yeah. yep. um, it's just what an odd, odd movie, I guess is what I'd have to say. It's just a very strange experience watching the movie. I will say that uh, John David Washington, Margot Robbie, and Christian Bale have pretty good chemistry together. Yeah. You know? And that does go a long way. They're basically kind of holding this whole movie together with their bare hands, as far as I could tell. Uh, and, and a lot of the ideas, obviously, 
that are brought up in the movie are interesting, you know? Um, but to me, it feels like when you look at movies like Three Kings, you know, going all the way to uh, American Hustle and then this, like, uh, which are like, th- th- that's like three works of historical fiction I just mentioned, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and as you progress along the lines, it becomes more loose and shaggy. Like, it, it seems like um, the filmmakers caring less and less about the conventional things that would make for a satisfying storytelling and just kind of like, just wants to explore the things that they want to explore without regard for things like conventional three act structure or, or, you know, suspense or tension. It's just like, Hey, let's, let's hang out with these people and Oh, weird, wild stuff might happen. And that's kind of Mm -hmm. what the experience seeing the movie was sort of like I heart Huckabees too. Like that was a movie where I feel like it was just too smart for its own good. And he does not know when to tell, like, how to control his storytelling sometimes. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. It is not really of... anything like it. And I think mm-hmm. in, in that sense, it's it's kind of interesting as this strange artifact. You know, it's like, well, nobody makes movies like this. And it's so it, it's so bizarre that I can't really take my eyes off it, right? There's an, it, I'm interested. I'm drawn in. I was riveted. I, I didn't feel like, I wasn't looking at my watch, you know? It, it's but it also doesn't quite work as a, as a singular piece. I do think that the use of all these actors kind of works against it. Do do you know what I mean? Because Mm -hmm. as a result of it, I'm never really lost in the story. It's, It's more literally every other scene. There's like, Oh, it's another famous person. It's Michael Shannon. It's uh Taylor Swift. It's Alessandro Nivola is here you know like all like every michael myers okay michael Myer, like right. every actor is like a famous person and I, yeah. I, I i'm i actually do think it's it is a distraction like i actually do think it like it hurts the storytelling because you're watching it and you're focused on like what who's the next famous person Ra- academy award winner rami malik isn't it you know yeah. Anya Taylor, queen's gambit isn't here? you know it's just like robert, robert de niro okay here, let's right. go yeah here let's we go. go you know and, and so um I, I, I never felt lost in the story. It did feel like kind of this cavalcade of famous people um, instead. And I guess I, it, it does remind me of like some Wes Anderson movies in that way, where like there's there's a couple of Wes Anderson movies that at their worst are kind of like, oh, it's just like a, we're seeing like a bunch of famous people do um, do cameos. But like those movies to me feel much more finely calibrated. You know, they, those those Wes Anderson movies to me feel like, even if it is a bunch of famous people, like they're going to use them thoughtfully um, mm-hmm. and and never in excess. Uh, maybe the Royal Tenenbaums being the exception, but even that, you know, like yeah. obviously, like I don't know. I, I just thought the the use of incredibly famous people worked against the movie because it's not like all the famous people are playing famous people in the movie. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, which would be like maybe its own statement about fame if it, if they went in that direction, but. Uh, but they didn't. So anyway, I, I have, I continue to um, be impressed by the work, the, the, the body of work of Margot Robbie. I think she's extraordinary. I mean, from like I, Tanya, this, like she, she's really proving that she can do the real commercial stuff um, and, and then do these really fascinating um, roles that, that are kind of not against type, but you know, I, I think sh- she's so beautiful and so um, you know could really just get by on on playing very commercial in very commercial films. And she picks these really interesting projects and pushes herself and challenges herself. I I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm so impressed with her work in this and in other things. Uh, I just wanted to point that out. Yeah. Uh, she's great in this movie. I think the trio are are pretty great overall. Um, but yeah, shall mm-hmm. we do just a couple spoilers real quick? Sure, sure. Here we go. Spoilers for Amsterdam coming up right now. I will say that my wife was actually deeply moved by this movie uh, <laughs> in a way that I definitely wasn't. And part of it was about the idea of Amsterdam. Right, like that's that's kind of what the movie's about. This idea of Amsterdam, it's that place where we're, we're carefree, we're worry free, we're just go, going off and yeah. doing our own thing, and and how that kind of intersected with this main couple of 
uh, Margot Robbie and John David Washington. Like uh, that, that relationship felt like pretty authentic and real to me. Mm-hmm. Um, which is not what I can say for the Christian Bale Zoe Saldana relationship. Like that just felt really random to me and kind of a throwaway in the movie. But like I felt the John David Washington Margot Robbie connection. And at the very end of the movie, they're like, "Yeah, you guys can be together, um, but you're not going to go to Amsterdam." Um, you're going to go so one of those other countries that they don't even name. And it's because obviously we know that I believe world war two is ahead of them mm-hmm. uh, in the movie. And so it's like, the, it wouldn't be a happy ending for them to go to Amsterdam because like bad things happen there. Um, so they go somewhere else. And this is this kind of dream that like, Oh, and this, this, uh, this black man and this white woman can like be together in this kind of like dream ideal. Uh, it's like a, it's a, it's a sweet idea basically behind the yeah. concept of Amsterdam in the movie. Um, so yeah, it is funny that the, the sort of um, success or, 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 you know, uh, hero's journey leads us to, hey, we stopped these people from becoming the Nazis for a little while. They definitely <laughs> become Nazis and <laughs> World War II definitely happens. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's more you know. like the, the overthrow of the U.S. government, which, hey, what a, what a relevant thing to talk about right now. <laughs> it, it, it is kind of annoying that this movie doesn't even play. That's the like one actual thing. You know that uh, that makes it topical, right? Yeah. Well, that makes it topical, but also all these characters were basically just created for this movie. You know, the the one piece of history is uh, that General De Niro's character was basically they showed at the end of the movie, like did go on TV talking about like being approached about this like capitalist plot to basically overthrow the government, and that was the thing, and uh, is the thing we need to worry about right now in many ways. So yeah. would it would have been nice to focus a little more on that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, I think the movie just shows a lot of lack of focus in, in general. But you know, it's not—it's um, not like outside the the total realm of possibility, right? Or um, it's not completely unreasonable to make a movie that deals with something like World War II, but it mm-hmm. still has a sad ending. Like another right. movie that comes to mind is Valkyrie, obviously. Yeah. Um, well, I don't think where, it's, it's, that my point is that it felt like it wasn't a sad ending. It felt like we right, did right, it, right. everybody. We stopped the Nazis for a couple yeah. of years. You know? <laughs> we definitely <laughs> delayed that thing from yeah, the right. terrible thing. Right. That's what it, fe- it felt like that was the victory that we were celebrating is like mm. putting off the inevitable from slightly, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, for, but anyway, Valkyrie, another like that, that movie comes to mind, which is about the plot to assassinate Hitler, which yeah. is like, you know, going into that movie that they didn't succeed, <laughs> right? right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. If you know anything, spoiler for world history, but if you know anything about world history, Hitler was not assassinated. And so, yeah. you, and, and so it just takes a lot of skill to generate tension around uh, that plot. I mean, and the problem is this movie didn't generate any tension at all from what I can tell, you know, yeah. like about anything. Right. Um, so Maybe it just that's shrank what... from that notion because of that. Maybe it was just mm-hmm. like, well, we're going to concentrate more on these characters. And... Right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like we people are already going to know that World War II happens and the Nazis rise and everything like that. Um, so why even bother thinking about any of that? Let's just let's just hang out and, and experience the vibes with these people. I mean, I think know? that's basically what the movie does. Yeah. It's a strange thing that, to me. This climactic speech that De Niro gives to the mm-hmm. the, the Union it just feels like it's, it's it feels like such small stakes for yeah. everybody to be so worried about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the whole the whole thing felt really weird. The whole way that the union stuff was set up, and it was like, oh, it was this thing that was. I think it was already he was going to throw this party anyway, if I recall yeah. correctly, right? And it's just like it's all, the, the entire thrust of the, this sprawling movie is get a guy to talk at your event. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> oh no, that that one guy died. We need another guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, really I will say seeing Taylor Swift get assassinated was really Dude. The, the one big surprise in this movie for me. Well, and how it shows. Yeah, it's just right into their unsparing with just it. Blump, blump. Yeah, just right I into love it. it. I thought that was such a great way. I mean, I say great, you know, dastardly way to to, to do that where you like you push the lady and they're like, I watched, did you see they did it? That, it's that guy. I was like, oh man, that's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, and, Jeff picked up a lot of uh, tips. Uh, yeah, because next they're like, oh, they're, they're kneeling down next to her because they care about her. And this yeah. dude's like, they're kneeling down because they did it. And, yeah. you know, yeah. Also because he's black. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, uh, but it, th- that was one of the big kind of like uh, shocking moments 
yeah. of the movie was when she is. It's it's always nice when a movie can like shock you like that. You know, did you guys have a favorite or least favorite cameo in this movie? I guess is is my question. Have any any performances stick out to you? I thought Anya Taylor Joy did a great job. Yeah, in the movie, she's great. you know, she's like playing this kind of really unhappy character married to Rami Malek, but also, um, well, she seems. She seems a bit a, a little a little uh, invested in the terrible <laughs> plot, you know. I don't think she's mm-hmm. necessarily unhappy. She feels like she's she yeah, wants. She's unhappy with like Margot Robbie being there, and like that dynamic right, I yeah. thought was like kind of interesting. But um, yeah, any any yeah. notable appearances for you? Because since there's like thirty people, Robbie in this movie. Malik is fun. It's always fun to see him get really conspiratorial because that gives me like major Mister Robot, Mr. Robot. Vibes. Yeah, but also uh, Timothy Elephant. Who shows up briefly in this movie, but I feel like his one thing is make me ugly. Yeah. Just everyone else is beautiful. Make me ugly. I couldn't okay. believe it. I was like, why did you take this part? It's just very fun strange. Yeah. yeah. He well, he had a break between, you know, between Justifieds, Jeff. You know, like yeah. there's a new Justified coming out and the Can't old Justified wait. ended. So he's like, Hey, let's uh wrap this up. You know, let's uh oh, you need me for three days of shooting? Why not? Why not? Yeah. So any other thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it's it, it, it's it just takes you to strange places, and you never really know where you're going or where you're headed. And usually, I love that feeling, and I love that feeling here. You just there's no destination. <laughs> it turns out you're, you know, it's just a thing. Fine. Well, at the end of the day, it's impressive that everyone behind this movie made a movie. All of Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video of the Filmcast. Check out these other videos that we have available and be sure to hit like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to get other videos from us in the future. You can also go to thefilmcast.com to catch all of our audio podcast versions of all of our episodes. And support this podcast at patreon.com slash filmpodcast where you can sign up for ad-free episodes and exclusive After Darks. Thanks so much to everyone who makes the Filmcast possible. 